Hello, my name is Paul Bartlett. I'm a wood turner here in southwest Florida. I have quite a few videos up on uh, my channel, my, wood, my uh, YouTube channel, and uh, people have been asking me about my slow turning system. Most of my videos at the end of the video I show my I show the system but I'm just using it to apply the epoxy and do the finishing. So this video that I'm going to do now I'm going to show you strictly the slow turner how I made it. Uh, all the parts you need with reference to where you can get them and uh, I have several different types of uh, slow turners and We'll cover all of that and hopefully that will help any of those who want to make one. So, hope you enjoy watching the video. Okay, here's a uh, view of what I have set up. I have two different kinds of, of slow turners here. I have one here that uh, uses a barbecue motor with a 0 to 60 rpm uh, variable speed. A little more expensive to do but very nice. And then I have this gang of four here that I use. I do lots of uh, multiple turnings, nested bowls, etc. So um, here's that I'm going to show you just around in the back so here are the motors I use they're all uh, 8 to 10 rpm and uh, that's just kind of view of the construction I did for this one with a barbecue motor um, these things are wired with your wires go in here depending on which side of those you go it will reverse the motor and I might make a note here that you uh, must always have your motors turning counterclockwise so in case you have a chuck on the shaft it doesn't want to try and unscrew itself I know that from experience and then they just have switches up here that are, are uh, for, for each separate one because I don't always use them all so that's pretty much the view around them um, this is this one you can make them any style you want as far as you know you have to mount your motor and then Get your bearings out there. So this one here is with a gang of four. Now you could, if, if you're only making one of these, you could just picture this as being one of them. Okay, you just ignore the rest of them. So you would make a a back and a base. This is this is a a wood base coming out here. I have it covered with some Teflon and plastic. And uh, the, the important part is you need to keep this shelf here at the center of your bearing to here to be to your maximum swing of your lathe so you can do the biggest possible diameter. And uh, Mounting these, this shelf should be square, square to here, to this surface, because the motor, the motor is mounted right here. Okay. Now, to mount these uh, bearing blocks, first of all, some people have asked, why am I using such great big heavy duty bearings. Why couldn't I just use a block of wood with a hole through it? Well you can, but if that's going to be just, if you're going to just do little light 
teacups or something like that, a little teeny small stuff. Because otherwise, with these two bearings, when you put the shaft through, these bearings take all the load. There's never any load on this motor shaft, okay? It's all on these two, two pillow blocks here. And basically what I do with them is you take a threaded rod, you know, however, however long, you know, one inch eight, it's available at almost any good hardware store, uh, you know, like True Value or any of those, or Home Depot, I'm sure, probably has them. One inch eight rod, cut a piece off, and you drill a hole in the center of it. Now, it's very hard, if you don't have machine shop capabilities, to drill that hole in the center. At least it is for me. You know, I even did it on my, my wood lathe, even with a center drill, and it still is not perfect. So if you have connections in a machine shop, you give it to them and tell them what size hole you want and have them drill it in there. And the piece I have in there is just a bolt. I forget, looks like a quarter inch or five sixteenths bolt that I just flatten one side of it to give a place for the set screws to grab. And then I drilled and tapped a, a hole in the side here for a quarter twenty set screw. That holds it in place. I suppose you could epoxy that in place, but in case you ever have to change it, I use a set screw. And then you would put your sh your shaft would go in like this, okay. And the they have because and then your motor motor is mounted on the back because the shaft on the motor is quite short, and I think it's five sixteenths in diameter. Um, you need to have a thin, I got quarter inch plywood here on the back and I mounted it to, to that because I have supports to stiffen it up. And they make flexible couplings. These are made out of aluminum with set screws that are deliberately made for situations like this when your motor shaft and your rotating shaft itself don't line up perfectly. You put these in there as you can see on this other one. And as you turn them, that will flex to take up any of your misalignment. I mean, they should be aligned as close as possible but that's sometimes not close enough. They won't, they won't take a lot of offset because it'll break. It's only aluminum. So, and these are readily available on Amazon and very, very cheap. So, and I have that reference at the end. The other part here now, I'm putting these bearings on, these pillow blocks, you want to keep them as square or, or parallel to your, in my case, the quarter inch plywood back there. Okay, so you would start out and put this one in first and put maybe a gauge block back here of, you know, whatever whatever it is, piece of wood nice and parallel so that you get this block parallel to that surface and then put it in and screw it down. All right and as you can see under underneath here I think they just they're through bolted with uh, 3 8 bolts. Then you want to put the front bearing on here and you can put a Another spacer in between here to keep it parallel to this one and put your shaft in. OK. 
okay to go like that and make sure that that shaft is nice nice and free in there so uh, and so you have to adjust this bearing this way or that way and when you get it to where it's good you, you uh, drill it and bolt it down and if when you bolt it down for some reason it starts to bind the shaft up you have to loosen the bolts a little bit and maybe stick shims under here just a little little thin shim style if not if this is nice and flat and let and and uh, square to the back plywood face you should be good and uh, if this one inch rod is a little tight in the bearing even to start with even one one by itself I just put it in uh, in the uh, put it in a lathe and I actually took coarse sandpaper and sandpapered down the threads a little bit where you could use a fine file and just just like file or sand it down until it fits fits into the bearing these bearings are self-aligning okay to a, to a certain extent so if you're off a little bit you might be all right, but I like to you keep them nice and straight. So that so you would do that, put that in, and then you mount your motor on the back. Okay, what I do first of all when I have this when I have this shaft with the the bolt in it, I run it all the way back to here and turn it or, or tap it with a hammer while it's turning and make sure that that's that's where I will drill my hole for my motor to be mounted through for the shaft to come through for the hole and you make that hole big and plenty big enough in case you have to move the motor around a little bit to uh, to make a uh, make things line up so, so you, you put that, you mount, the, you mount the motor, and now to put the flexible bearing on there, these come with a different size holes in, in either end, and uh, they're very easy to drill out. So I had on mine, I think I had to drill one side out to, to fit one of the shafts but you just put the uh, flexible bearing onto the motor shaft like that and then you tighten you tighten those down and then you put you put the other end in with the uh, I can't do this with one hand so there we go and then you would tighten tighten both of those down you could also these these collars on the bearings. I would tighten at least one of them down on one bearing. It would keep your shaft from wanting to come this way if something gets loose. So that's kind of how that whole shaft setup works. With your motor on the back, don't forget you can adjust adjust it until you, when you have it turned on, you see minimum uh, flex in your flexible coupling, and that will be the where you would want to tighten it down. Now the other the other thing I do is when I when I uh, put my pieces on for the most part onto these 
slow turners. Um, I, I use some just some uh, wooden pieces like this, and I hot glue it. Let me get a bowl here. Okay, I take and I I hot glue it onto the bottom of the bowl. What I actually do is I put this ball in the lathe and use my coal jaws to just lightly clamp it up. So I, and then I put this in the tailstock with a, a chuck attached to the tailstock. So when I put them together and then put hot glue on here, as you can see, I haven't. That's hot glue from the last setup, which I haven't taken off yet. So I'm going to put hot glue on that and just bring it up quickly to the bowl, and it's as much centered as as it can be. Okay, even if it's off a little, not a big deal. So what I do is with the bowl, what I like to do, if it's possible, is finish finish the bottom first just put I do epoxy this is all about epoxy finish for the most part I like to put a finish it and put epoxy in there because that gives it a nice surface for the hot glue to stick so I will hot glue it and then I'll run a bead of hot glue around the outside also and it removes very easily by just spraying on with one of these little spray bottles from the dollar store you just spray denatured alcohol inside and around the outside and you'll be able to just take that and take it right off of there and uh, it works really really well so that's what I that's what I like to do for 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 my most of my stuff. Now, if I have something really small like this one, very small, I actually use I have a bunch of these with the uh, two screws in them. And a, I just put a one inch dowel because this is a one inch a one inch hole in there. So I use a one inch dowel turned down so that it'll fit on the on the end of my very small bowl. So I put a set that up the same way or these little ones you can just eyeball it a little hot glue in there and you're good to go so now that's the way I would do it with anything small and if I had a uh, excuse me running around with a camera here if I have a sphere which I do lots of lots of spheres I put a hole in most of them end up getting mounted on some kind of a swivel so I have a hole in them and I would use one of two one like this with a a uh, they call them hanger bolts they're threaded on one end and and uh, got a, uh, a uh, screw thread or a lag screw thread on the other and I would just screw that in there and then when I put it on the lathe I usually put a little spacer in there which I have a nut which is probably just as good so that I can finish all of the sphere with, up to the hole okay and uh, you can do that or I have another one here where I just drill a hole and then I tap it out to 4 to 20 or 5 16 whatever and just screw that in there 
and uh, so that uh, that works pretty good. Also, the reason one another reason for these is it's a quick on and quick off, and when you're putting epoxy on, it's nice to have a your bowl. Okay. Let's assume I have my bowl hot glued on this. Now you've got a handle. So you can epoxy it and, and, and with it in your hand like that. And then you can quickly go over and put it on the slow turner. Crank it down. You know, t tighten it down. And uh, you're good to go. Otherwise, trying to put it on a slow turner is a little more tedious with the epoxy at only, uh, you know, nine to eight to ten RPM. So I just wanted to add that in there. That's how I do that. Now, uh, the my other slow turner here. With the barbecue, I'll just kind of show you how that how that works. It works very similar to the same way. Now, when you if you're not doing epoxy finish and you want a slow turner for urethane or any other varnish or or, or what you know finish, 17 to 20 RPM, yeah, more maybe up to 24. I don't know. You know, just I find my lathe only goes to 50. And that's too slow. I have another slow turner in the shop that is 17 RPM. Seems to be perfect for the uh, um, urethane finish that I did use. Okay. Now these motors on the that I show at the end when you go on Amazon and you'll see it. You'll see they come in different speeds. And I believe there is one in there that's uh, uh, 20 to 24. That probably would work. But with this one, with the barbecue motor, uh, I really, if you're gonna, if you're gonna make just one, and you are willing to spend a few extra bucks. This is a barbecue motor that goes from zero. Let me turn it on here. Zero to sixty RPMs a minute. So I really like I like this I like this one. Um, I also use a flexible coupling. You can see my alignment isn't perfect there. With that bearing is flexing that hasn't broke yet okay and it's the same setup two pillow blocks now there's a square shaft that goes I believe it's a square shaft that comes out of this motor Right in here. Okay, so you just have to file to fit fit the function one of those holes to fit over that square, and then you would do the same th on this end here. You would do the same as you do on the the other slow turners. You know, just uh, put your bolt in there and and drill out this end to whatever diameter you need, and and put a set screw in it. So I really like this one here because it's actually, you can use it for epoxy or, or anything. So I use it the, the same setup and you can make them anyway. You just need a, as I showed, it's a flat surface there. And you need to keep your height of your distance here to the table at whatever the maximum swing of your lathe is just so just so you have enough room. And uh, 
I think that's uh, it for, for that one. Okay. Okay, another reason that I like this one with the barbecue motor is if for some reason, and, and I do sometimes have to put, um, when I want to finish my part before I do the bottom, or for whatever reason it still has the, the chuck on it, and I want to put a coat of uh, epoxy on it, if you have the, your part in the chuck and you come out here and you're going to do that, you have to, once you get all the epoxy, all the epoxy on it, then you got to come up here and you've got to, actually I'll do it on, on uh, one of these here if you can see it. You have to take and screw that and by if you do, you have to wait so long that the epoxy might start dripping at this speed. You have to screw on. So what I do is I use mostly when I do that, I'll use this slow turner here. And you turn it on, and you can turn the speed right up. And there you are. On. And then to take it off, you just reverse it, which I didn't mention, this motor is also reversible. So you can do that. Makes it quick to get off. And then if you if you've just got it on there. You just slow the speed down to the uh, seven to ten RPM. I have a little mark on the on the head here that tells me about where I want it for epoxy. So, all in all, I guess if I was just doing one, I would I would go this way. The motors uh, is I don't know maybe eighty bucks versus. $28 for the ones over here, but well worth it, I think. Um, the other thing you want to keep in mind that these uh, motors on the back here, they run very, very hot. Not a problem, that's the way they're supposed to. So ju that's just a little extra added note there. When I first got my first one, wow, that thing is hot. But, that's the way they that's just the way they operate so you kind of want to have a don't want to box them in where there's a you know gonna hold the heat just let the air get at them and uh, also also if you had one of those spheres on it with the uh, pin coming out you could use a pin jaw chuck and put that on do the same thing it's just easier quick and easier to use these that have the, uh, the hole in them, slip them on quick. And because uh, if you've got epoxy fairly thick all over your piece, you don't want to be messing around holding it in one spot for too long because it'll, it, epoxy wants to run. So that's it. And there's one other thing I wanted to mention on uh, the slow turner. When I I have a jam chuck, or I mean a, a jam nut, I call it, that I've made up, that I put on here, so that when I put the chuck on like I did before, it had to go way on deep. That's really not necessary. So you can just put that on until it hits the nut. And then just tighten that jam nut up, and you're good to go. So, also, um, to show how I do all my finishing, I have probably 
10 videos on my YouTube channel at this point or more and uh, at the end of most of them I show this slow turner and how I use it, how I put the epoxy on, what epoxy I use, what brushes I use, all that information and you'll, you'll see it in use. I didn't want to duplicate that here so you could just go back to any one of my other videos and if you didn't want to watch the video all the way through you could just skip to, towards the end uh, and you'll see me using these uh, slow turners in the process and I think you'll uh, enjoy seeing that uh, also I didn't want to repeat it here so and thank you for watching and the pictures below or pictures that follow will give you all the information you need all the part numbers and everything that we've covered here and so you just need to stop the video and write it down or do a screen capture or and screen grab and uh, you should have all the information information you need and so thank you for watching and any comments are welcome